Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. Hello and a warm welcome back to youtube.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep with me, Tom. Before I introduce today's video, just a quick reminder that on May the 20th and 21st, 2023, the National Museum of Computing at Bletchley Park, Buckinghamshire, England, are hosting a Retro Acorn Econet LAN party networking event. If you're regular to the channel, you'll have seen my last video getting an 8-bit BBC Micro Master 128 ready to take down to the event. It's happening over the weekend, the 20th, and 21st of May. However, I will only be there with my Master 128 for Sunday the 21st only. But I do intend to be at the museum all day. If you're just visiting, it's normal museum entry prices on the door and the event forms part of the museum's normal content for that weekend. Right, back to today's video and we're talking Raspberry Pi again. After 10 plus years on the scene, supply has all but dried up, mainly as a result of the COVID pandemic. As of April 2023, almost everything bar the Pico Arm microcontroller is out of stock, and reseller prices for any kind of new stock is, at the moment, going for crazy prices online. Hopefully, things will improve. We have been promised more stock, however, retail list prices are going to rise. My only fear is what's happening is if scalpers just buy up all the stock in bulk or if those with projects in the works panic buy stock. In the meantime, however, I have found some used Pi 1 and even some Pi 2s are being available online for under £10 per board and some listings even include formatted SD cards and cases. So are these used Raspberry Pi relics actually any use? Well, I bought from a listing on eBay. So let's do an unboxing and find out. This video is sponsored by PCBWay.com, offering services such as 3D printing, injection molding, CNC machine tooling, sheet metal fabrication, and of course, turnkey PCB manufacturing. Take a look at PCBWay.com forward slash projects and all the amazing things people are creating with PCBWay's wide range of production tools and services. So don't miss out. Sign up for your free account today at PCBWay.com. Details and links are in the description. So as many of you will know, getting hold of Raspberry Pis, especially at the moment in the beginning of 2023 and for the entirety of 2022 has been pretty awkward. So much so that I did a video where I went and actually started picking up cheap used Pi boards, these being Pi originals, off eBay. And I picked up, how many have I got there? Three I picked up. And these are all secondhand used and all working and uh, labelled up. There we go, labelled up as such. So I've been scouring around looking for these main reason I've been wanting the originals is if you want certain very low power tasks such as running dumb terminals for vintage computers that's what we've been using with our tiny basic computers project among other things then the original Raspberry Pi is actually really good at that mainly because it has both HDMI and full composite video no need for adapters or piddling around it just works and running a dumb terminal doesn't take much of anything so the little bit of RAM these things have and the 700 megahertz um, single core clock speed at 32 bit is fine for what we need. So I've been trying to pick these up. Basically they're kind of the equivalent of Raspberry Pi zeros, the original zero ones that are meant to be coming back on the market soon but they're really no more powerful than these. Admittedly one or two of these I think are, I think they're all either 512 megabytes or I believe one or two maybe 128 megabytes. Anyway those are the ones I've bought so far. And I bought another one, which is here in this envelope. Couldn't do this as part of the donations video because, well, it's not a donation. I actually went and bought it. Cost me about £10, including package. I think these all cost about 
I think they were around about £10, which at the time was the going rate. I don't know what these are going for now, but I imagine they're probably going to go a couple of pounds higher or may start dropping in price again as suddenly no one wants them. But anyway, let's have a look at this one. So, what did I get for my £10? There we go. It's another Model B. But it's an early Model B. Actually comes in a case. And... That's a full size SD card and it's a 16 gig SD card that it comes with. And yeah, that looks all right. Got to remember that the original Pies had full size SD cards, not the micro SD cards, which they moved on to very quickly actually with the B pluses. I'm going to zoom in just to show you this. This one is actually, you can see it there, made in China as opposed to most of them, which will say made in the UK. So yeah, this is a very early one. And you can also tell, what's the copyright on that? 2011, 2012. Yeah, I think most of them are silk screen like that actually. Yeah. But you can also tell there's a slight different with the audio jack. That's the full stereo headphone jack, uh, which you don't get on the later models, but that's black on this one. And on the later boards, it's actually blue. Other than that, there's a few component differences, but there's not much else different. Um, it has got the screw holes here and here. Now, those are totally non-standard to everything else that came afterwards. I do actually have some earlier Pi boards that don't actually have the uh, screw holes. Of course, the advantage of these boards is they're not particularly valuable. And... They're quite useful for being able to chop up or change bits or desolder bits. Um, so I just needed a few used boards that no one wanted to kind of play around with, really. And that's what we've got here. But the big question is, does this Pi with this SD card, and I have no idea what's on this SD card, does this Pi actually work? I bet you this is a really early 128 megabyte version of the B. Let's see. So let's put in the SD card. I've got HDMI, full size HDMI connector there. I've got some power. This is off a Raspberry Pi 3 power supply. I've got to remember these that they have all the connectors coming out of every other angle. And then you've only ever got two USB sockets. So we're going to swallow these up with and get to it. A keyboard. And a mouse, there we go. Okay. What do we reckon then? Will this work? Is there anything on this SD card? I have no idea. I've not powered this one up yet. So let's find out. I'll also be very curious to see how quickly this actually boots up. If it boots up. So let's power on and we've got some activity. Rainbow boot screen. Looking promising. Okay. Ah, there we are. That looks like something. Some sort of Raspbian. It's probably his Raspbian. The fact we're seeing a, a boot kernel means it is an earlier build. And again, it doesn't auto boot, so it just sits at the Raspberry Pi login. Now, I wonder if this hasn't been changed, we'll be able to get in. But. Mm, if it has been changed, let's see now. So I think the what was the login on this? It was uh, was it Raspberry password Pi? No. Oh, hang on, I might have got that the wrong way around. So is it Pi? Oh. Right, let's try that again then. So I might have got that the wrong way around. So is it Pi and Raspberry? It is. There we are. So we've got into the prompt. So yeah, this is an early version where you used to have to have manually log in. So if I remember correctly, you say start X. 
Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, slightly strange aspect ratio, but it's there. That actually loaded quite quick, considering it's a Pi 1. Let's have a quick look at the filer. It is amazing, actually, how quick this operating system is compared to uh, sort of the modern Raspbian, especially on original Pi 1 hardware, which you've got to remember, this is. Oh, gosh, do you remember Indie City in the... Uh, or Indie City, sorry, in the uh, Pi store? That lasted long. It was meant to be an, uh, an app store for the operating system, and uh, they actually shut that down. And there's some assets for some Python games. Let's have a look at the menu. Yeah, Pi Store. Programming. Python 2 and 3. They've actually stopped using uh, Python 2 now. And the original Scratch is there. Oh, go on. Let's have a quick look at Minecraft. I bet that actually works. It does, but it does this horrible... Um, uh, over, it never worked properly. You know, there's a world. We've already got a world on here. We've got a world? Someone, someone's been playing on this. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Oh well. Yeah, <laughs> ironically, this is probably the only thing that uh, Raspberry Pis are ever used for. Especially in education, it was Minecraft. So we can actually fly. For some reason, my jump's not working. Got the third person view. I mean, it's a very simplified version of Minecraft, so there's not a lot. That's your entire inventory. So, that is some activity on this. I did wonder if it's ever been used, but let's have a quick look and. Uh, uh, Yeah, there's no like documents or anything, is there? Quick look at Scratch, why not? That seems to load quite. Do you know what? I I swear I remember Scratch being really slow on the Pi. That seems really fast. Okay, it's a little slow loading in, but yeah, I kid you not, we are running on. I'd love to know what actually capacity this. Uh, I actually is. Let's have a look in terminal. I bet you this won't work, but we can give it a shot. Let's see if NeoFetch is actually on board. No. Uh, do you know what? I'm curious enough. We'll, go, we'll make a change. I'm going to install NeoFetch. Now, of course, these original Pies do not have any Wi-Fi or anything. The only connection they have, if you had the Model B, because the Model A didn't even have that, is hardwired Ethernet connection. So we'll pop that in. By the way, this OS is so horribly old and it's running on the default password. That this is really insecure. So don't do this. <laughs> don't do what I'm doing. But OK, um, sudo app-get. Install, I think this will work. NeoFetch. Is that a thing? Tell you what, though, it probably needs an update before it would even do it. So, oh, sudo app get update. I'm going to absolutely regret doing that in a minute. <laughs> Some index files fail to download. Well, again, we're really out of date OS, but let's see if we can install NeoFetch. Would that now work? 
no nope, that ain't gonna work yeah so yeah that's the problem with running such an old os it, it doesn't have any uh links back to uh yeah oh well curiously interesting though it just runs so fast but it's kind of it's vintage pie in its own right now but i again i do think this is a, a 200 foot i think this is a um this might be a 128 or a 256 megabyte Okay, so now that's shut down, let's just turn off the power. And I want to swap the SD cards over. So that's the original with the uh, old version of Raspbian. And I've got this SD card. You might have seen it before. This is an 8 gig card that I made up, got a good few years ago. And it actually contains a old, what I suppose you could now say, legacy version of Risco S5. And I always keep that one just to run on original Pi hardware. So let's power back up and let's see how long that takes to boot. It's just trying to find an internet connection. That's the bit that always takes a while. It should find a connection because I've got a hardwired cable in. There we go. Obviously I've messed around with this one a bit. Now this is, how old is this? It's 5.21 from 17th of f from the 17th of February 2015. Right, so it's uh, yeah, it's a few years old. This one, the OS has been updated since then, and those of you that follow uh, this channel will know about the Risk OS Direct project, which is built on this but runs a much newer version. Um, yeah, and I sort of I. I just keep this one as is really because it's got a few bits in it I've been playing with. Um it's like Chucky Egg emulators. Uh the port of doom. Should probably run alright. Bear in mind this is a Chinese made early pie. Don't know if you're getting any sound or not probably not but that actually runs really really smooth and really fast so one thing i do like about risk Rest, especially when it plays doom it does play doom very very well So, as mentioned, these Generation 1 Raspberry Pi boards can still be quite useful, especially due to the lack of Raspberry Pi Zeros at the moment. It's fair to say I've collected a few, with some very early box examples will be kept as is, whilst others have already been cut up and modified for projects and development work. And you'll see some of that and what I've been up to in future videos. The fact is, with current stock shortages, you can still get really good deals on whole used packages. That's pies with cases and SD cards, etc. As long as you don't mind using secondhand used items, which, if they work, I personally don't have an issue with. It remains to be seen whether or if we'll ever see Raspberry Pi stock that's not just the Pico microcontroller return to levels before 2020. Coming up three years in, and we're still waiting. Anyway, that's it for this video. A quick reminder, once again, I'm at the National Museum of Computing at Bletchley Park, Buckinghamshire, on Sunday, May the 21st, 2023, for the Acorn Econet LAN Party networking event. Details are in the video description. If you can make it, it would be great to see you. If you haven't done so already, please do consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you real soon right here on the channel. Until next time, thanks so much for your company, and bye for now.